focus question on the education and the uh, FAOS occupation. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to thank the organisers for inviting representatives of staff occupation to speak at the rally. It might not be the right word, um, but I think the organisers were right to invite the students to show a solidarity. Um, but either way, we feel privileged uh, that you invited us and that we're here. I also want to congratulate the organisers for having such a brilliant demonstration uh, and in David Cameron's constituency. He's just great. <laughs> and David Cameron, if you're listening, no one but no one buys the dribble about the big society. The only thing you think about the big society is the banking bonuses. <laughs> and I think this is exactly the kind of thing we need to keep doing. We need to keep coming out on the streets. And we need to make it clear to the condemned government that we're going to stay out on the streets until we beat them. And we shouldn't believe that they can't be beaten. I must admit, I feel proud to be a student these days, because I feel that we've taken the first step. We have seriously rattled the government. But the truth is, the students can't win the fight alone. And this isn't just rhetoric. We talk about unity between students and workers, but you have taken a real step in building that unity. And I want to tell you what happened at SOAS because it was truly an amazing experience. It's amazing how people changed so much in the space of a few weeks. And we changed because we realized we had some leaders, some power. The student union called the meeting over the cuts on the 18th of November. There was only one motion, and it wasn't about occupying. But there was a group of us they decided we, need to, we needed to have the discussion about occupation. We had 250 people in the meeting. We had an intense debate about whether to occupy. And a lot of students, they were drawn to the idea, but there was also a lot of hesitation. What does this mean? Are we going to be making enemies with the management? Will this harm ourselves? Will other students join us? What will the staff say? In the end, we won the vote, but only narrowly, by eight votes. And it was such an intense discussion that we didn't even go straight into occupation afterwards. We waited until the following Monday, the 22nd. Because we thought, we'll gather more students, we'll strategize exactly how we want to do this, we'll, we'll put out leases, and we'll, and we'll persuade the students who weren't sure. So when Monday came, we had a rally outside the main steps of Sora. We had a speech about why we had to occupy, why the increase in fees wasn't the thing that we put the whole of society. We had a slogan to pluck up our courage, and we walked in into the building office, and we stayed. We ended up staying for three weeks. It was one of the longest occupations. And there were three things that made us stay for three weeks. Three things that made us believe that we're not alone. First is the mass demonstrations. A lot of people talk about the violence on the demonstrations, but we need to remind people who had the conscience, who had the horses, who had the shield and the helmet. Yeah. It's the vast majority who went to hospital were students, and it was outrageous what happened to some of the students. I wish the media would pay more attention to what actually happened and less to the press releases put up at the Metropolitan Police. Because it was that first demonstration on the 10th of November that gave us the confidence to occupy in the first place. And that demonstration was followed by another and another. And it was led by the students. The second thing was the other occupation. The demonstrations were spreading across the country, but so were the occupations. University after university. In the end, there were at least 40 universities that occupied after SOAS. But the third thing was the support that we were getting from SOAS staff. The keeners brought food to show solidarity, and most support staff were with us from the word go. I have to say, the academic staff took a little longer. You know what academics are like? They have to look at both sides of the audience for a couple of days, <laughs> and then they have to look at their labels for another couple of days. But we showed our tenacity, and by day four, with the help of UPU and Unison, we had email after email from your staff to Paul Webby, our director, warning him that he had to open direct talk with the occupiers. And then the staff organized teachings in the occupation, teach outs around London. And by the second week, there was a very strong lesson coming from the vast majority of academic staff telling SOAS management they stood in solidarity with the students, that cuts to higher education were not necessary, 
and a dark man is to be supporting all student occupations. <laughs> we didn't win all of our demands, but we won the argument. We occupied and we left on our terms. Management had a policy that they don't recognize occupations as a legitimate form of protest. But when they realized they had to, we had the majority on our side, they couldn't do anything. They'd lost. And they failed to implement their own wrong-headed policy. But there was also support from campaigns like Coalition of Resistance, made up for people from all across the country to understand that we are not going to be, that we are not going to put ourselves in a position where we have to choose which cuts we're going to take. One thing we learned, one thing we learned is that the NUS, when the NUS called the demo, we need to put everything into it. And on the 10th of November, the students followed. It was big, it was lively, it was broad. But when they failed to call a demonstration, when they failed to reflect the anger of the students, the students have to organize without them. The PUC is calling a demonstration on the 26th of March. It's only two and a half months away. I think we need to make this the biggest demonstration we have seen so far. <laughs> And I know the students will be there. And if the students and workers start fighting together, that would be a movement that really could break the government. And I think that's why building the 26th of March is so important. So solidarity is not an optional extra here. It's absolutely vital. Ooh. At the moment, I might have less to do with the students. But I also work because I can't afford to with the season. I'm not on a scholarship. And I still say, bring it on. We will fight you, David Cameron, until you break your government and any subsequent government that tries to tell us we need to pay for a price we didn't create. <laughs> we're starting a new term at SOAS tomorrow and we're going to put the argument to students to occupy again. We never got all our demands, so the fight isn't over. But not only do we need to occupy, we need to escalate. We don't, we, we, last term we occupied the gallery space. This term we're going to the administration. We need to make our university ungovernable. It's not easy. And we're going to have a lot of debates and discussions about the right way forward. But that is the only kind of pressure that management and government will listen to. And I want to say that if we do go into occupation, one of the first things we'll do is get some of you to come and address the students. We're also organizing a demonstration on the 29th of January in London and Manchester, and I urge you to come because we don't want to continue to fight alone on this. And I want to end by saying that we have everything to play for here. Last year, after one month of campaigning, the students on their own had to come down battle. This year, if we're united, we can bring them down. <laughs>